Welcome to today's COVID-19 update press briefing. We have with us uh, Mr. Ch Dr. Choi Taki, Under Secretary for Food and Health, Dr. Shang Shok Kwan, um, Head of the Communicable Disease Branch of the CHP, and Ms. and Dr. Larry Lee of the Hospital Authority, Chief Manager. We'll first hear from Dr. Choi. Good afternoon, everyone. The epidemic situation is aggravating. The number of cases on the first day of the Chinese New Year, that is the 1st of February, was 129. Yesterday, that is the 9th of February, it was 1,161 cases, which is close to 10 times off a few days ago. We have to use extraordinary measures to cut the transmission chain of the virus so that our healthcare system will not collapse. We have been saying that uh, given the current aggravating situation and the high number of um, confirmed cases, we have no choice but to launch uh, uh, other measures uh, to reduce social uh, contact amongst uh, members of the public in order to cut the transmission chain. That's why we have amended CAP 599G, that is a prevention and control of disease, prohibition on group gathering regulation to introduce a provision to prohibit multifamily gathering. We want to send out a very clear message that you, all of you should refrain from non-essential gathering so that we can work together to uh, bring the epidemic under control. The provision states that um, there, there will be a prohibition of uh, gathering involving more than two ha family households. The design of this provision is, uh, is uh, on the basis of households. That means if you live under the same roof, then you're counted as one household. However, carers of anyone in any household will not be counted. In other words, if there are two households gathering in a private place, and if um, there is a carer for one of the people in the household, that means the carer will, even if the carer is the third or the fourth household, they will not be counted towards the two. On top of that, uh, workplaces or necessary repair work will not be under such restrictions. Every case will be dealt with depending on the actual situation. We will remind uh, law enforcement officers uh, to pay attention to these elements in the enforcement guidelines. On top of that, starting from today, the number of uh, groups, number of people in a group will be reduced from four to two. Another area of concern is the vaccine pass. Starting from today, uh, for catering premises of type D mode of operation, they will um, first uh, use the vaccine pass. Apart from staff members who have been fully vaccinated, customers of type D op mode of operation catering premises will have to at least have been vaccinated for one dose. For each table, the maximum number of people seated is four, pe is four people. For types B and C mode of operation catering premises, the number of persons allowed per table will be reduced to two. And they should make preparations for the full implementation of vaccine pass starting from the 20. 4th of um, February, when all catering premises will be prohibited from organizing any kind of banquet. In order to cater for special circumstances, we have we have introduced exempted scenarios and provisions in the vaccine pass. So if someone is going into a premises just to uh, get takeaway or to pick up certain things or to uh, to proceed with necessary repair work or to receive vaccination treatment, tests or necessary government services, as well as uh, legal proceedings, they will be exempted. Or if someone is going through a place to get to the place of work or place of residence, then it will be um, accepted as a reasonable excuse. However, those who work in that premises will not be exempted. Well, the uh, 599, CAP 599L, that is um, 
the uh, prevention and control of disease vaccine path regulation provides um, legislative framework enabling the Secretary for Food and Health to make vaccine pass directions. Before the full implementation of the vaccine pass, uh, we will work out the implementation details for everyone to know and how we will make use of passive and active law enforcement uh, approach uh, to enforce uh, the requirements. We are aware that um, a lot of um, citizens have been cooperating with us, and we've seen queues outside uh, the testing stations and sampling stations. So we will introduce enhancement measures, say, for example, in, in one station in uh, Chinwan, we will um, we have installed a dispensing machine for the uh, for the quota chit. And starting from today, we have arranged for over 200 civil servants uh, to assist in the crowd control at these uh, stations. We we'll take into account the situation, and we will arrange for caring queues for those who are frail, elderly, or pregnant. Uh, the, DH the CHP will take into account the current situation and make adjustments in order to reduce the gathering of people. We need your cooperation to keep the epidemic under control. We ask you not to engage in or to organize uh, multiple multi-family gatherings. And those who have, um, who have not yet been vaccinated for the third dose or who have not been vaccinated, please do so. And if you have elderly um, family members in your, in your household who are not vaccinated, please explain to them the merits of vaccination and the uh, consequences of non-vaccination. Dr. Zhang, we have recorded 960 cases that are positive. One is an imported case. The other one, that is uh, 950, um, nine cases, uh, local cases. We, of the over 900 cases, we have conducted a genome analysis. 26 of them con uh, contains L5452R, um, four, 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 and eight, eight, 883 of them uh, are Omicron cases. From the 31st of December to now, ex excluding today, we have 5,200 Omicron cases. The age range is less than one, eight, one year old to 104 year old. The median age is 30. We have also identified among the cases, more cases at the uh, Discovery Bla at Bay Plaza. Some of them are customers, some cleaners, and people working at different shops. We have asked the management of the plaza to close the plaza for dis disinfection. We have also additional residential care home cases. In one of them, uh, there, it, there is um, a case, but there are additional cases at the same um, elderly home, that is, a Wen Lun home for elderly. And in a uh, Tongwa group of hospital care home, there is a preliminary positive case. The resident lives in uh, one room, so others living in the same room will have to be um, tested. In one Yut Wulo, one Yut residential care home, there are also some preliminary positive cases and positive cases from RAT. Some people might have to be sent to quarantine. For TWGHS uh, Ho Tong Residential Care Home for the Elderly, there is a staff member who is preliminary positive. But that person hasn't really come into contact with uh, many residents. and. In Lei Zhong Yu residential care home, there are also three staff members who are preliminary positive. There may be a transmission. We will follow that up. And in Kwai Chung, Tang Da residential care home, there is a care worker who is a confirmed case.
we will follow up on this case. And then, 何玉清翠柳怡婷 Under the TWGHS, there is a kitchen worker who is a confirmed case, but that kitchen worker doesn't come into contact with other residents, so the residents there do not have to be quarantined. In Sai uh, Ying Pun One. Um, there's the case that we mentioned yesterday. There are two elderly people on the third floor. They are confirmed cases, so those staying in the same room will have to be sent to quarantine. Now we'll hear from Dr. Lee. In the previous 24 hours, the hospital authority has recorded 616 cases. 359 patients have been discharged. So about 13,700 patients have been discharged and over 1,000 patients have been staying at the um, AWE Community Treatment Facilities, the North Lanta Hospital Infection Control Center, as well as 15 public hospitals. I'd like to talk about a fatality case. There is a 94-year-old female patient. 18712 is the case number. On the 8th, because of a difficulty in breathing and a heart failure, she, um, she was sent to hospital and from the screening it was a positive case it, um, she was sent to ICU and this and her condition continued to worsen and died that patient the person um, was an omicron case we felt bad about uh, the passing away of this patient altogether 208 um, patients have passed away in public hospitals, counting this one as well. There are three patients in a critical condition. First is a 48-year-old male patient, a case number 14814. It's a confirmed case, staying in Chiang Kwan O Hospital and not vaccinated. There are two preliminary positive cases, which is an 80-year-old uh, male patient and a 97-year-old male patient. Currently, no uh, case numbers. So for the first one, uh, double vaccinated, and the last vaccination was September last year, and the second one is not vaccinated. There are six serious cases. The first one is a 50-year-old male patient, case number 14932, the other one staying in uh, well, United Hospital. The other one is an 84 male patient, 17506, staying at United uh, Christian Hospital. The other one is a 77 uh, female patient, case number 13400. The other one is um, uh, a 50-year-old male patient, and the other one is 15500. 15540 staying at Tun Wun Hospital. The other one is a 91 male patient, uh, case number 16687 staying at Tun Wun Hospital. As you know, that uh, most, of, most of them have not been vaccinated or just been uh, vaccinated for one dose or the second dose was last year. So we, we say that uh, you should get vaccinated as soon as possible. Those who are double vaccinated, please arrange for a booster, especially if you're an elderly person. I would like to make an appeal now. Well, if you go to the ANE or a general outpatient unit, you will have to tell the staff there whether you are under um, compulsory testing or you have done an RAT because uh, a risk assessment will be done to arrange for that person to be weighed at an appropriate place to avoid cross infection. I'd like to uh, talk about a special case. A special subject because of the rapid rise in the number of seeking uh, medical consultation. The HA approved today that the special subject will be expanded to cope with the uh, operational needs now under the surging cases. So for all frontline workers, in recognition of their hard work, uh, we are expressing our recognition for that. The subsidy will come from more anti-epidemic stuff. We hope that during this difficult period, we encourage the frontline workers to uh, actually uh, live up to the duties in the uh, North Lantern Infection Control Center and also Asia World Expo treatment facility. We are e distributing special subsidy to the staff there. Now, because of the rapid increase in the number of patients, all public hospitals are mobilizing um, staff to handle the overcrowded situation in uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2 wards. And up the A&D units also are uh, 
handling a large number of patients who actually have positive test results. So we need to allocate staff working in uh, hospitals to help with the work. So we need to extend our appreciation for those frontline staff. We are now hammering out the details for the special subsidy, and we will communicate with staff internally later about the final arrangement. Let me express my gratitude again to our staff for their hard work during this difficult period in fighting the epidemic. And also for cases of our staff who are infected, you've got 23 colleagues who have preliminary positive results, including a doctor in Northern Hospitals, 10 nurses in Pamela Youth Nettleston Hospital, uh, Ruthen G Hospital, Caritas Medical Center, Hong Kong Children's Hospital, Prince of Wales Hospitals, Paul Oi Hospital, Castle Peak Hospital, and so forth. And there are also uh, two dedicated staff in blood uh, transfusion service, and also there are 10 clerical and support staff in uh, Eastern Hospital, Caritas Medical Center, Northern Hospital, Tubman Hospital, Yen Oi Castle Peak Hospital, um, that is so community service and CHK Chinese medicine teaching clinic. And the hospitals and fashion control teams have ticked off tracing of the contest and carry out thorough disinfection. And they're also making sure that because of the uh, uh, wearing of PPE on the part of patients, so no patients were classified as close contests. But about 20 colleagues. Uh, were classified as close contacts. They're at Portland Hospital, Tumor Hospital, Caritas Medical Center, Nethersole Hospital, and the Red Cross Transfusion Service, and Children's Hospital and Eastern Hospital. Uh, they're based there. And Caritas Medical Center earlier on had got two nurses, nurses infected earlier, and later on we found that one more nurse and another staff have been infected. And Professor Yun Kok Yong is carrying out an inspection there now, and he'll make a report later on. In, in at Houston Hospital, a 62-year-old male patient was confirmed, and we carried out a, a tracing, and we found that one more patient care assistant has tested preliminary positive. And the uh, we find that in our vetting of uh, patients, four patients in United Hospital, Truman Hospital, Princess Margaret Hospital, and Cornwall Hospital, and 13 other patients in the same ward, and also three other medical officers have been classified as close contacts. So now is the time for Q&A. Please tell us which media outlet you're from. This man in the front, please. I'm from TVB. In the past two days, there were a number of cases uh, which uh, took a taxi to the A and E unit or who could not really make it to hospital and who have been also turned back to uh, their homes. Hospitals cannot accept so many confirmed patients. So how are you going to follow up on this situation? And now as the pandemic gets more and more serious, Is the government going to be more lax with regard to the handling of cases? Because there's so many of them. Would you change your anti-pandemic policy? We know that there are confirmed cases who are stuck at home waiting to be hospitalized. As I said earlier, if they tested positive after compulsory testing, we want them to wait patiently at home. If they find out the results through rapid testing, antigen test, we suggest that they should look for the or ask their family members or friends or some uh, courier companies to give them deep throat larva sample test. And should the test results be confirmed, they should wait patiently at home. We know that the current situation is not ideal, but we hope that the public can show some understanding about it. Any supplement on the uh, anti-pandemic policy? The government all along has uh, maintained the goal of dynamic zero infection. And because of the special uh, nature of the virus, its high level of transmissibility, cases do soar easily. And the uh, Department of Health, as hospital authority, have actually worked together closely at several stages 
for example, by increasing testing and enhancing the tracing capacity and also to ramp up quarantine and isolation facilities. So Penny's Bay Quarantine Center, some facilities that are used for quarantine purpose have now been used to house patients with mild symptoms and who are in stable condition. And the government would gradually ramp up our capacity more to cope with the current pandemic. Next question. At the back, please, on the right. Short haired lady. I'm from Phoenix TV. Uh, Dr. Lee, in the past two days, many more people have been infected. And to Professor Yun said that Hong Kong does not have the resources to cope with it all. So how's the authority? Uh, what is the problem with it? Is there a problem with the distribution of beds or manpower? And also for the patients, what are the average time of being hospitalized? If there are more patients and their hospitalization period cannot shorten and the situation get worse, what solution can there be? And also I'd like to ask about the situation at uh, A&E units. The patients who went to the A and units who are non COVID nineteen patients, what will you do with them? In relation to A and E department, well, if you uh, suffer from anything other than COVID and it's a mild uh, case, then go to a private doctor, and we already have a mechanism to for triage. Currently, the admission period, uh, the, the median admission date is to 10 to 12 days, and we previously adjusted the, the discharge criteria. We hope that this will alleviate uh, pre the pressure we face. I can't deny that um, the hospital authority is facing a lot of challenges in terms of uh, number of beds as well as manpower. But we are health workers, healthcare workers. It is our calling to take care of patients. And no matter how daunting the task is, we will all work very professionally. Next question. Let's take an English question, the one on the right. Good afternoon. Some English questions from the South China Morning Post. First, can authorities clarify on um, the situation of social distance things with regards to weddings and marriage ceremonies? There was a lot of confusion today with the frequently asked questions website. So are people still allowed to hold uh, marriage ceremonies in the registries? And given that there is a household uh, gathering ban, so are traditional tea ceremonies at home not allowed to be held? And, or can they be held at hotels or other venues? Uh, my second question is about um, the so the Education Bureau has asked schools to, to suspend classes and, face, and, and limit their, um, and to stop their face-to-face -face classes. But what about the non-registered EDB classes, such as interest classes or um, daycare centers? Is the two-person limit also valid? And my last question is concerning the amount of cases that are being confirmed. Uh, every day, the, the preliminary numbers are different from the um, confirmed cases. Is there a backlog of confirming the cases? Uh, or is there a, um, has the testing centers reached their capacity at the moment? And given that it takes so long to get hospitalized for asymptomatic cases, what is the recommended waiting time for people to stay at home if they test, uh, if they test positive using the rapid test kits? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chair, please. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the questions. Perhaps I should answer the first two questions. Um, about wedding ceremony, I think in the previous um, period when the um, uh, epidemic situation is uh, less severe, we have relaxed or we keep uh, allowing people holding wedding ceremonies uh, with a limitation in the number of people. And in in the usual sense, I think wedding ceremony would mean a group of people, family, friends, gathering and celebrating and also witnessing um, the uh, process, uh, a kind of situation like this. But in the view of the present severe epidemic situation, the government is trying very hard to encourage uh, people not to have a uh, gathering and also implement new regulations and laws to uh, help people to restrict their social activities. So along this line, we think um, 
celebration activities involving more people is not uh, advised. And, and it's also it's not uh, conducive to control of the current epidemic situation. So uh, we think uh, any kind of ceremonies to celebrate a uh, wedding, for example, is not to be encouraged. On the other hand, we acknowledge the need that some people would need to register their marriage. So according to the um, um, Marriage Ordinance Cap 181, we would allow uh, persons to participate in the statutory um, marriage registration process. And the number of participants would uh, not ex exceed the statutory required attendance for marriage. For example, the registrar, civil celebrant, and also the officiating minister, the parties, meaning the two uh, uh, persons involved, and two witnesses. Uh, under the marriage ordinance cap 181, and this is allowed. And for the second question, I think I don't have any information on the so-called non-registered education facilities, so um, I can't answer the question. Thank you. Could Dr. Lee please uh, supplement on the hospitalization, the waiting time? Yeah, my last question is about the waiting times. One is about the, from being tested positive on the rapid test kit and yeah. also the lab capacity right now. Mm -hmm. And what is the recommended waiting time for people who test asymptomatic to be mm -hmm. sent to hospital or treatment? Okay. I, I wonder because the number actually, uh, we're using a computer platform and which are uh, for the hospital authority to allocate the patients. But I uh, would like to see Dr. John have any supplement about the input of the data. But uh, as for the page confirmed can stay at home, I, uh, I have some suggestions in two, two main directions. One will be the personal hygiene. They have to wash their hands frequently and also use a well-fit surgical mask. As I mentioned before, the surgical mask, they can wear additional cloth one, or maybe they can use clip or not to make sure the mask to be uh, more well-fit. As for the environmental, the second point, they have to stay in the room, well ventilated, keep the window open, and we have to minimize any face-to-face -face contact with the other family members, and also we have to avoid and, and try, uh, try to minimize any time that will be masked off, and avoid uh, having meal to, uh, with any family members. And also I would suggest to have some um, cleansing of the home with the breaching agents and also mm -hmm. weekly basis they put in half a litre of the water into the used sewage and this is my recommendations. Oh, now it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a few days okay but I don't have any concrete data. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chen? Yeah. Um, for those preliminary positive by the um, private laboratory, they will directly notify us. We will treat them as preliminary positive case and manage as confirmed cases. So we'll initiate uh, management, uh, isolation of the cases, uh, quarantine of the close contacts immediately. Usually these cases will be confirmed um, during, I mean, they will send a specimen during the day um, to our laboratory and our laboratory usually will confirm the case if um, the specimen was sent early uh, during the day, uh, confirmed during the night. So we will report that in the next day. The other person, I'm from Dot Dot News. Just now the Hong Kong U announced uh, a model of the development of the epidemic. Even if you impose the most stringent measures today, the healthcare system will very likely be saturated in March or April. Government experts mentioned that they can't rule the possibility of um, suggesting citywide lockdown. So what do you think about such suggestion? Will you consider that? In relation to preliminary positive cases staying at home, what uh, guideline, what support would you provide to them? In relation to epidemic control, we are aware that is uh, evolving very rapidly. What we can do at the moment is for everyone to take a moment now to think about 
whether they can uh, cut down non-essential activities and gatherings. That is the rationale behind our legislative amendment. We ask every one of you to make changes to your everyday life in order to reduce the um, social gathering. Healthcare is a very important area. And that's why I have mentioned that when it comes to isolation, quarantine, tracing, testing, we have various mechanisms and arrangements in place uh, to optimize every aspect. For testing done under the um, restrictions and testing declaration, we have done a number of them. And as to the scale, uh, we will need to further plan it. On the right, second left row, second last row, I'm from Lao TV. I want to ask about the wedding ceremonies. We can see that, well, I think the government has changed its rules on the weddings. Initially, you said weddings were not allowed, and then you changed to a limit of 20 people, and then now it's changed to just covering necessary stuff. Why are there so many changes in such a short period of time without a press release? And also, uh, when it comes to testing, under Secretary, have you noticed the long queues at testing stations? Is that satisfactory to you? People have to queue up for three, four hours at the same spot. Isn't that conflicting with the uh, precautionary measures? Will the government insist of comp on compulsory testing? If the measure cannot cope with the heavy crowds, would you think of some sort of relaxation of the rule? Or if people who are, or for um, some districts, maybe you can, or people who miss the compulsory testing, can you spare them from being fined? And that's a more humanitarian approach. And just then you said you want to distribute the rapid testing kits to everyone in Hong Kong. But even before those kits were distributed, in some districts alone, you know, people could not actually handle it. And uh, people cannot send their, for example, uh, get the kits in time, or those testing positive cannot be hospitalized in time. So given the latest situation, is there any room for change in your measures? As for weddings. Before, when the uh, epidemic was more under control, yes, at different premises, we allowed for wedding ceremonies to be held. Weddings, besides the couple themselves, there is also the presence of statutory figures and friends and relatives. There's a limit on the number of people who can be present. For weddings, it is a kind of group gathering with hidden risks. And now, since the pandemic has become so serious, and we have to tighten the social distancing rules, we think that weddings should not be allowed. But we also think that sometimes people may not be able to distinguish between registration and wedding ceremony itself. So therefore, we come to the conclusion that for some people, they may not need the ceremony per se, but they do need to go through the legal procedure. Therefore, we want to pinpoint exactly what is allowed under the regulation, and so as to accommodate people who want to just want to register, they are tying the knot. So we just want to make it clear that we allow under the marriage ordinance allow for people to register the marriage together, and so it's. Okay for those people to be present at the scene for the registration purpose. And for testing, we totally understand and are aware that in many districts, heavy crowds turn up for testing. And many people were there, of course, on the spot. There's such a big demand for testing. The advantage of mass testing is we can identify cases early and have early treatment and isolation. But we know that if for people to wait for a long time at the same place, it's really not ideal. Once again, 
let us apologize to those who are affected by the arrangement. The government is well aware of the situation. In the past few days, we have actually been reviewing the situation closely and tried to come up with improvement measures. In terms of uh, crowd management, for example, we have hired more people to maintain order and also to provide care for people who need assistance, like pregnant women, disabled or elderly people. I know the provision of chips uh, actually is tried at some sports. The effects have been quite good. So today and tomorrow, there will be 10 machines distributing chips at some testing stations so as to reduce the people flow and the crowd scattered at one spot. And we'll provide more such machines at different testing sites. As for the rapid antigen test, the government has announced that we would send the kit to everyone in Hong Kong, but we need to have a proper support measure for the entire um, territory-wide testing exercise. When it comes to procurement of the testing kits, distribution and collection of specimens and so forth, and also the verification later on. So we need to have a detailed plan first before actually implementing it. So in due course, we'll announce the details. Lady at the back, please. I'm from Cable TV. I know that yesterday the HA uh, called on people who test positive uh, following rapid antigen test to stay at home and not to go to the ANU unit hospitals. But that would pose a heavier risk to the family members. Does HA have any concrete guidelines for those who are stuck at home? What can they do? so as to reduce or minimize the risk of infection. For example, putting on masks, staying in their rooms. Can you give us concrete guidelines? If the family members are very worried and they want to move out to a hotel or stay in a relative's place, would that actually increase the risk of infection in the community? And also, today, uh, the number of cases seem to be, uh, have, seem to have uh, come down. So is that because of the backlog of testing? And in Chimon testing uh, site, there is a machine distributing chips there. But online, we found that people sold their chips to bidders online, costing up to more than $100 per chip. So are you worried that that situation will become more common, making it even harder for some people to go for testing? I understand that for some preliminary positive or positive cases, for them to stay at home for long, that's not ideal. Um, I hope that you can uh, understand, appreciate your understanding. But I just suggested that personal hygiene, washing your hands frequently, and also wearing masks, well-fit masks, really close to their face, and put a cloth mask on top of their surgical mask, or tie knot around the ears and also to stay in a well-ventilated room, leave the windows open, and to eat alone, not to share meals with family members and avoid any intimate behaviors. And also we hope that you can use the bleach to, uh, diluted bleach to actually clean the room and also add half a liter of water to the U-trap every day. That is what should be done. As for the system of distributing chips, in the past, we have uh, received various news, information about what happened at testing sites where chips were distributed and we got some positive feedback. And now that given there are long queues at testing sites, we think that giving out chips could help improve the situation so people don't need to queue up for long at the place. But my machines are only just the hardware. We need to have support measures, including on-site providing staff to monitor the uh, collection of the uh, chips and also crowd control, crowd management. That's also necessary rather than just relying on machines alone. We'll definitely uh, pay attention to what's going on. and. For people selling up the chips online, I cannot comment on individual incidents, but I believe that at the site, we'll make sure that there are people providing assistance to people getting a chip. Everyone will get only one chip. On the right, at the last row, please, the gentleman there. 
Court Young has proposed that patients with no or mild symptoms uh, should self-isolate at home if the uh, hospital becomes uh, overwhelmed. But the high-risk family members should be sent to centralized facility for better protection. So what does the government think about this uh, suggestion? And secondly, just now the uh, Undersecretary talked about the defenses that people could use if they did not use the vaccine pass. Um, for example, uh, when they may have to pass through shopping malls for work or return to their homes. So will the authority state clearly those offense, uh, defenses in the ordinance to avoid legal disputes? And also Dr. Chuan talked about a search in cases in Discovery Bay. How many cases were found in the area and do you see an outbreak going on there? And lastly, we understand that public hospitals are under a lot of stress to deal with COVID cases, but for patients with uh, chronic diseases or those with severe illnesses, uh, have medical services for them been affected? And how do you make sure that these patients will also be taken care of uh, properly? Thank you. Sorry, may I know who is asking because I can't. I can't. Okay, uh, can you please repeat your first question? First Sorry. question? First question. Yes. Um, um, the first question is about the proposal by microbiologist Yung Kuo Yong, uh, who said that patients with no or mild symptoms should self-isolate at home uh, if hospitals become overwhelmed. Um, but at the same time, the high-risk family members should be sent to centralized facilities uh, for better protection. So what do you think about his suggestion? Is that something the government is considering right now? Well, currently, we are very uh, closely monitoring the situation uh, of how the epidemic is uh, developing, and also we're going to strategize how we handle uh, people who are infected or close contacts, uh, the, con the environment for their treatment and isolation or quarantine. So we have already implemented uh, modification in our measures in, for example, introducing home quarantine for close contacts and also family members of close contacts and also using Penny Bay, which is usually previously a quarantine facilities to house uh, patients with mild symptoms. So we are gradually modifying the hardware that we have uh, to accommodate different kind of people in need, including patients and also contacts. For the vaccine pass, um, well, there's definitely a need to introduce a pass to uh, first of all, to uh, highlight uh, the government's uh, decision or determination to uh, ensure people get the protection through vaccination. On the other hand, of course, there should be exception uh, provided for people who may not uh, be suitable under, uh, to be put under this kind of legal requirement, for example, uh, young children, because the, uh, the implementation of vaccination for young children or very young children uh, is not uh, fully established yet. And uh, in implementation of the process when the uh, uh, regulation come into place uh, upon 24th of February, there will be a more detailed uh, operation um, guidelines on uh, what a citizen should, uh, should uh, do and what, uh, for example, uh, venue operators will do their sort of uh, re uh, operation guidelines will be issued. Thank you. Uh, uh, maybe I'll talk, sorry. Sorry, maybe I talk about the chronic disease. I will assume you're talking about the essential service. Of course, at the moment, hospital authority, we have um, some non-essential service have to be treated. But for essential service, no matter the emergency, inpatients and outpatient service, which is unaffected. But I would like to emphasize that we have a special program for um, chronic disease patients to come to the outpatient basis uh, with a medication review. Uh, so far, the, we know that the, in the Discovery Bay process, there are at least four cleaners, two customer service um, personnel, and uh, two um, shopkeepers. Uh, are, are, uh, confirmed cases. So we are worried that uh, the PRASA, there may be some transmission in that PRASA. That's why we ask them to close and for disinfection. Of course, we will quarantine those close contacts in those shops. Next question. The gentleman at the front. I'm from um, Independent News. Every day we have over a hundred several hundred cases. Is it still meaningful to 
uh, introduce lockdown or for more than one day. There are experts uh, say, suggesting that those with mild symptoms uh, can stay at home and just take Panadol. At the same time, there are experts saying that the, the city should be uh, under lockdown. What do you think? Do you have uh, figures about uh, those Omicron confirmed cases in relation to the percentage of people who have been vaccinated? Dr. Choi, about uh, the uh, lockdown approach. Number of cases has been increasing rapidly. In the past few weeks, we have been reviewing our approach. First, the large number of confirmed cases and the, res the corresponding increase in number of close contacts. We have converted certain facilities at the Penny's Bay Quarantine Center. These facilities are now converted to receive uh, stable patients and patients that are young or a symptom or mild, only with a mild symptom. We have also introduced a stay home safe scheme. We will do our best. to make sure that we we can achieve early uh, early diagnosis early treatment early isolation etc when we take stock of what we can do what we have done and what we can do we will consider all alternatives in order to stabilize the epidemic we have conducted certain analysis from the start of the fifth outbreak suspected Omicron cases. There are about 56% of the cases that are double vaccinated. For suspected Delta cases, 49% of those patients are, doubly vaccinate, are double vaccinated. The report in blue. I'm from Hong Kong Economic Times. I'd like to ask. First, a question for the Bureau. Just now, someone mentioned about queuing to get um, the number chit. Apart from, well, even for, for an actual queue or those um, getting the number from the dispensing machine, there are people who are paid to do that. So it's about, an, it's a, it's about ethics. And would you follow up in this respect? Second question is for the hospital authority. You mentioned about six serious cases. Any information about whether they have been vaccinated and when they were vaccinated? And it seems that on for a number of days, you talk about confirmed cases in care homes. So in the fifth outbreak, how many residential care homes are involved with uh, confirmed cases? Can you tell us why elderly people without uh, leaving the care home are so easily infected? First, about queuing to get the number. It's, well, the dispensing machine is quite well received. Using the, the ticket dispensing machine is a viable option to reduce the waiting time in the queue. So we, we identify locations for these ticket dispensing machines, and we also deploy manpower to monitor the situation. If we spot any irregularities or inappropriate behavior, we will try to stop it, and we will 
upon receipt of information, uh, review the situation. There is one out of uh, the six cases, that is 16687, uh, we have no information. Uh, for the others, uh, there are two that are not vaccinated, one uh, who, who have received uh, one dose and uh, two receiving both doses, and they, ha they were um, administered in August last year. Counting today's case, uh, there are twen over 20 care homes uh, in which staff members or residents have been confirmed to have caught the virus, and there were evacuation exercises involved. At the beginning, it was uh, just um, an individual resident or staff member, but recently, starting from yesterday and today, we have seen some outbreak. The residents don't go out, but staff members do. Some t maybe they were infected from the community and have brought them in and have brought the virus into the care home, causing the outbreak. Last two questions, the gentleman over here. I'm from AM730. First, vaccine pass. Just now, you said that uh, details will be announced before implementation. Are they about, uh, well, are they FAQs or um, guidelines with a legislative effect? Well, for people who, who go home and they have to go via uh, several shopping malls, it is rather inconvenient. Well, when you want to get a test, when you want to get vaccinated, or just to try to get a ticket, you have to uh, stay in the queue. Are there any measures to reduce the time spent on these things? For home quarantine and So uh, that will be on top of that, uh, there is the sewage surveillance. Does it mean that sometimes uh, you have spent double the amount of resources on doing the same thing? And what about the impact on residents? For the vaccine pass, it will be fully implemented on the 24th of February. I understand that. The legal provision cannot be exhaustive, so we would like to pop promulgate appropriate guidelines to announce the details. You will find information on the internet, uh, frequently asked questions under uh, CAF 599 and on our dedicated website. We will keep updating the information. For the uh, testing capacity, we'll continue with our uh, testing because we need to identify these cases as soon as possible. We are aware of long queuing time, which is not ideal, so we aim to uh, enhance our software and hardware. We will improve uh, crowd control, and we will try to take care of people who don't feel well. When it comes to testing, we will talk to relevant government departments. we might adjust the frequency and the scope where necessary. We try to reduce demand. Sewage surveillance is only one, uh, one of the approaches to uh, expand the coverage to identify potential cases. 
So whether it's someone living in a flat or whether it is uh, identified under the sewage surveillance, we will be very careful in order to avoid inconvenience. For the uh, Penny's Bay isolation facility, there are about 300 uh, cases or so. Well, uh, we will take in the young patients, uh, patients with no symptom or mild symptoms. Sorry, speakers of mic. The speaker is not using microphone. About actual operation. In our next round, when we announce social distancing measures, we will see how we can reduce uh, inconvenience. Mingtao, for the issue of confirmed patients waiting to be hospitalized, Department of Health and Hospital Authority, can I ask you how many of the uh, confirmed patients have not yet been sent to hospital? How long have they been waiting? And all along, quite a number of uh, positive cases, even though they had symptoms, had to wait for many days before they were sent to hospital, or even after they had recovered before they were sent to Penny's Bay or Asia World Expo. So it seems like they have been uh, having quarantine at home. So how can you, um, well, how will you decide on, you know, when patients would quarantine at home? And how do you assess the risk posed to family members? Should the cases develop symptoms? You know, Hong Kong's flats tend to be small. For the close context, do they need to be locked down? If there is com compulsory testing needed, what would you do with those family members? In the past few days, with the surge in cases, Penny's Bay had um, got additional 300 patients there. When would Penny's Bay Quarantine Center be operating at full capacity? Uh, I don't have the figure for people waiting uh, the, the time they had waited for uh, to be sent to hospital, but I think it will be a few days in general, but of course, this is not ideal. And for people waiting to be hospitalized, I know that there is a hotline available, but um, we also would take the initiative of calling patients who have been waited for some time, for quite a long time, to provide assistance and advice. We will try to link up with them through another hotline so that they can receive the information they need. For the living family members, as I said, Personal hygiene and the environmental hygiene is very are very important for them. Penny's Bay Quarantine Centre, phase one, five hundred to six hundred places. They will be full soon. In the short period, of, in the short term, we should be able to use phase two, which will provide more places. If there are no more questions, then. By midnight last night, we've got 700 more people who are quarantined at home. All together, 1,306 people quarantined at home, involving 571 residential units. Uh, on, on the day of the confirmation we call it dating.